In case you missed it, here's Dave and Cheryl's favorite moments of the week. So the 95th Academy Awards, the Oscars given out uh, last night. In case you missed it, here it is, the whole show in 10 seconds. And now, in case you missed it, the entire Academy Awards in less than 10 seconds. Red carpet. Jimmy Kimmel monologue. Movie clips. Awards. Singers. Film highlights. Commercials. Dead people montage. Political statements. More awards. Speeches. And that was the 95th Academy Awards in 10 seconds. There it is, right there. Now, when you talk about the Oscar Awards, though, I always talk about the, you know, the bags and the gift bags that they get and... Boy, they're getting a lot of stuff. Yeah, and this year, the infamous Everybody Wins a gift bag uh, contained swag worth about $123,000. Included more than 60 gifts, ranging from a $16 package of chocolate-covered pretzels to a $40,000 visit to a luxury Canadian estate, which is actually near Ottawa. And here's some of the highlights. Uh, there's a 40000 So there was that... Uh, uh, luxury property stay near Ottawa. It's a place called The Lifestyle. Um, a three-night stay at a um, property at a lighthouse in Italy uh, for the nominee and up to seven of their friends. It's worth about nine grand. Uh, a one-square-meter plot of land in Australia through the Pieces of Australia Conservation Project. That's worth about 50 bucks. A $12,000 arm liposuction procedure promising to give women an, quote, instant lean and toned look with smooth shapes and perfectly defined contours. Fancy. Well, I mean, you're in a world where you're judged on how you look. Mm-hmm. Also, there's up to $10,000 worth of procedures like chemical pill peels, laser skin resurfacing, and Botox included in there as well. Or how about the uh, private hair restoration consultation with the leading hair transplant surgeon? That's worth about seven grand. If you're a guy that's marketed yourself, or a woman, on your hair... And suddenly it starts falling out, Mm -hmm. and you're not ready to accept that. It's thinning. Yeah. Or how about this? Uh, Shinery Radiance Wash. A hand soap featured on Oprah's Favorite Things list. Which, uh, by the way, they say cleans your jewelry while you wash your hands. Oh, okay. And meanwhile, I'm thinking back to those old palm olive ads. (laughs) (laughs) It softens your hands while you do the dishes. That's about the level I'm at. (laughs) It makes makes them wrinkly, too, if you're there for too long. Yeah, that's what's in my gift bag. In case you're wondering, too, the IRS does view the value of these gift bags as being taxable income. So even if they never use any of this, they still have to claim it on their income tax. Yum. Science. It's not rocket science. Check it out. I blinded us with science. Don't you learn it? Well, filed this first story under, oh, what could possibly go wrong with this? Scientists have created a robot that can turn into liquid metal. Yes, just like in Terminator 2. Inspired by the sea cucumber, which can turn from a solid to liquid and back again, engineers from a university in Hong Kong created a shape-shifting robot. And this is where the end begins. We're going to go off the rails with all of this, right? So video footage shows a human-shaped robot turning into metal to get through the bars of a cage. You want me to repeat that again? Video footage shows a human-shaped robot turning into metal to get through the bars of a cage. Robots can also, uh, these ones, conduct electricity too. Great. So they can also electrocute you as well. (laughs) My eyes just went real big when you said turn into metal to go through the bars of a cage. My eyes just went, great. Yeah, what could possibly... What sort of negative effects could this have? Never. Never No use. one would ever use that for nefarious purposes. No. Hey, Australian researchers are working on new technology that may allow mobile phone batteries to last for nearly a decade, about three times longer than they do now. So currently, only about 10% of handheld batteries, including those in your phones, are recycled in Australia because... Doing so is expensive. The rest go to landfills, which is really harmful for the environment. So this new innovation from these engineers may help with this. Scientists also say men may be able to tell whether or not they'll someday go bald by looking at the length of their fingers. Dave is studying his hands now as we speak. (laughs) In a study of men who had been diagnosed with alopecia, so male pattern baldness, researchers found that male baldness is six times more likely to occur if a man's ring finger is longer than his index finger. You looking at your fingers now? I am. Your ring finger is not longer. My ring finger is longer than my index finger, yeah. It is? You're looking at my other finger that I... is is very rude to show people. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) You're looking at the middle finger. Oh. Yeah, so there you go. Dave, you just... Confirmed. Confirmed. 
Confirmed. And check out this last one, too. People are saying this guy should go on Shark Tank with this idea. Husband down in Dallas wanted to help his pregnant wife sleep better. She likes steep sleeping on her stomach, but, you know, when you're pregnant, you can't really do that for obvious reasons. So he bought a memory foam mattress topper. He cut a big hole in it for her belly and put it on top of her bed so she could sleep on her belly. And then the pregnant belly was kind of like in the little cocoon. So people have been so impressed by it, they're already trying to order it. This is a mattress topper. I just cut a hole in it, that way she can lay down. How's it feel? Great. Feel comfy? Yeah. Yeah, it really does. Thank you for this. So he's now patented the idea, and he's accepting pre-orders on eBay. You know what, though? I will say this. I'm pretty sure I've seen my massage therapist has something similar for when she's working on pregnant patients. Kind of like a little thing to put them in. I've seen it there mm-hmm. underneath the table. Well, this sounds like it's something even more unique like and really designed. For the for whole it. bed. Yeah. What a great idea. Did you know that watching television could save your life? We've got some examples of when people were actually able to save lives, the learning things and other th- ways that television saved their lives. Like on the TV show The Office. Remember they did a whole episode where they were showing how to do CPR as part of like the in-office training. Well... I've seen numerous stories about this, but in one this one case, a man actually saved his daughter's life because he did CPR to the beat of staying alive like they did on The Office and saved her life. A German doctor was able to diagnose a patient with severe heart failure after watching an episode of House. And I've also heard of other instances of where the TV show House saved lives. A woman from Israel, uh, she was watching Grey's Anatomy and it made her think, I should go get a second opinion because she'd been diagnosed with cancer. Wanted to make sure it actually was maybe cancer and not something else. A contestant on X Factor got diagnosed with a serious lung disease after Simon Cowell and Sharon Osborne pointed out a weird rasp in her voice mm. and said, you need to go get this checked. Finally, a man was accused of murder, but his appearance in a Curb Your Enthusiasm, enthusiasm episode gave him an alibi. So he was able to prove, well, I, I was filming this TV show. I was I an extra on it. Where this was happening. And look, you can see me in the back of the episode. <laughs> We've got some animal stories for you this morning about bobcats, sharks, and gators. And our first story, a person in Arizona returned home to find a bobcat sleeping in their doggy bed. In the house. In the house. The homeowner contacted authorities, uh, but the animal decided to leave on its own after it finished its nap. Um, they suspect that the bobcat came in through the doggy door. See, this is why I'd never want to have a doggy door. Well, here's the thing with doggy doors nowadays. They come with, like, when you leave the house for a long period of time, or, you know, you're leaving the house and you don't want the animals roaming in and out. There's a thing you put over it, like a security, so it closes and doesn't open. Well, maybe they've got an older door, right? They must have forgot to do that, but... <laughs> Um, luckily, no one was hurt, but they shared some photos of the bobcat asleep, cuddled up with a blanket, mind you. <laughs> Reminded residents, um, you know, if you do come across a wild animal in your home, to contact the correct authorities. I like this too. A parody account called Nittack Bobcat replied uh, saying this was a terrible Airbnb experience. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Zero right. stars. Question or Story number two. Humans aren't the only ones that are heading to Florida for spring break. A 1,200-pound great white shark is currently being tracked off the Florida coast. Ooh, that's a big one. Scary is that? A maple is an eleven foot long predator, and he's hanging out somewhere near St. George Island right now in the Gulf of Mexico. She does have a very noticeable scar on her left side. Apparently, she got in a fight with an even bigger shark. Now, the Great White was tagged off the coast of Nova Scotia in two thousand one, and gets her name from the national emblem of Canada because of you know the maple leaf. Uh, also being tracked, too, so tagged and tracked, so they know where the shark yeah, is. Yeah, that's why they know she's vacationing down in Florida for spring break right now. And now our first of two gator stories. Yeah, this one is kind of crazy. Police down in Texas discovered this alligator in the backyard of a woman's home while they were investigating a separate incident. The woman straight up told them, oh, yeah, um, I got the alligator when it was just an egg. I was volunteering at an animal farm and... Uh, Took the egg, brought him home. Now the egg is a full-grown, eight-foot-long alligator. Wow. Yeah. So this happened 20 years ago is when she took the egg. So uh, apparently she wasn't able to actually get the proper permits to possess an alligator. Guess that's the thing down in Texas. Uh, So animal officials... 
sort of took him and actually took him back to where he uh, started his life as an egg at the zoo. Back to that uh, wildlife place. I love their uh, release they put out about it saying, quote, alligators don't make good pets, y'all. Now, I wonder, though, after 20 years, would that alligator have not... I don't know, kind of bonded with her a little bit. Might be a tough transition after 20 uh, Dave, years. I think you're thinking the alligator's a dog. An alligator's an alligator. It is a gator. How about gators answering doors? A man in Daytona is named Scott. He answered the door because he thought someone was looking for his son. It turned out to be a gator at the door. Mama, now the gator got you in the house. Now the gator? Give me that shovel. Come here. Get him, Mama. Get that gator. Well, in this case for Scott, it was scary. The gator actually bit him. He went outside, didn't turn the light on, and just got a step outside, and something grabbed him on the leg and started shaking him violently, he said. At first, he thought it was maybe a stray dog. No, it turns out it was a gator. It must have rang the doorbell. Uh, luckily, though, Scott has had surgery. He appears to be doing well. Uh, but he might have to alter his plans. Apparently, he likes to ride motorcycles and was uh, going to head down to Daytona for bike week. Apparently, might have to wait till next year. We've got several examples of law and disorder this morning, including this first one. A guy in Ohio was arrested after doing a backflip in front of police officers trying to prove he was sober, but they were not having it. That's good, man. That's pretty good. I can't do that. Have you had any psychedelic drugs today, man? No, I'm not. <laughs> All right. I'm just trying to be straightforward with you, bro. Your driving's pretty bad. Your eyes are super glossy. I guess my blue's coming from you. I'm going to have you walk down the middle of the sidewalk. And they're like, yeah, that's great. You can do a backflip, but pretty sure you're still drunk. All I can think of is that episode of Reno 911 where they make the guy do like a whole dance routine as a one, two, like for mm-hmm. the, instead of walking down the straight line. Then he finally admits, he's like, I can't do that. I'm so drunk right now. <laughs> In our uh, next Law and Disorder story, a truck might have been a better choice for a getaway vehicle. In this case, two guys down near Atlanta recently stole a bunch of stuff from a, a store. So much stuff they could barely fit into the car, but they took off with gaming systems and other random things like electric toothbrushes. But the cops caught up to them because they were driving a Tesla and no one thought to charge the car before robbing the store. And it doesn't just charge up like that either. No, it takes about 30 minutes to get a full charge. So um, their failure to plan was a plan for failure right there. And a bunch of other charges they're facing because they had some guns and drugs also in that same vehicle. Hey, a Florida man who broke into a gas station was caught after he left his debit card there. He claims that he left it so he could pay for all the merchandise later. Uh, here he is talking to officers about the break-in. So I just broke in with a knife. It's all on the security camera, I'm yeah, sure. What was your intention by leaving your card behind? Uh, so that I could come back later and pay for it. Just so they knew my name, you know? Just in case I got picked up. I didn't want to steal anything, you know? It's against the law. I, it's roundabout logic in some ways. I'm making this face right now that's like... What? <laughs> but you still broke into said store. How about With a knife? Time? With yeah. a knife. How about you go to a store that, I don't know, is 24-7? Find an open convenience store. Mm-hmm. And finally, uh, police were able to use DNA from a sweet potato to arrest a suspect 12 years later. So a guy by the name of Todd was shot in his home back in, Ma- in Massachusetts back in 2011. Shell casings and a sweet potato were found outside of the bedroom window. Well, police suspected the potato was used as a silencer on the gun in the crime. And they suspected this guy, so they followed him around until he spit into a puddle in 2016. Police were then able to use the DNA from the phlegm to compare it with the DNA found on the sweet potato. And then with some additional evidence, including text, GPS data, they were finally able to pin it on this guy. Isn't that wild? That's law and disorder. In a recent survey, 56% of people said they snore or have a partner who does. And 54% of them have tried all kinds of hacks to try and cut back on snoring. And we're talking about the regular hacks like extra pillows, anti-snore pillows, drinking more water, nasal strips, nasal sprays, decongestants, taking a hot shower before bed, using a mouth guard. But then there were some other different um hacks that people have tried to to stop snoring um things like avoiding alcohol before bed avoiding alcohol completely other people say you should drink alcohol before bed sitting while sleeping up sleeping backwards with your head at the foot of the bed 
And then there's the weirder hacks, which may be great or just silly. One was uh, taping your mouth shut, which sounds very unsafe. Uh huh. I would not like that. Putting a peg on your nose. So that you only breathe through your mouth. Also doesn't seem like a great idea. Uh, pred- uh, spreading thyme oil on your feet. And putting a tennis ball in your PJs to stop you lying on your back. But wouldn't the tennis ball move around as you moved around? I guess they're saying maybe you're wearing like a tight-fitting shirt, and so it kind of keeps it in place. I don't know. I feel like that would just wake me up every time I roll over on it, and that would disrupt my sleep even more. Unfortunately, uh, unclear how much success people have had with those kinds of things. So, you know, we had a story a few weeks ago about you can get a better sleep if you wear... An eye mask, like a sleep mask? Yes, and make it completely dark. So I've tried it. I ordered a couple. And what's the result so far? I know it's only been maybe like a week it's or been so. about a week. I will say this. When I'm wearing it, I sleep much deeper. Mm. So there's been a few times now where I'm waking up and the alarm's going off or my wife's had to wake me up because the alarm's going off and I'm not hearing it. So yeah, that's one effect I'm finding is that I'm sleeping much deeper i'd love to see the results like if you you know how you can check your sleep if you've got one of those types of i say do you have a fitbit or anything i've got to watch it measure certain things like that i'll have to check if it measures sleep because i'd love to know how long i'm in that deeper REM sleep which is where you get your well because i have a fitbit so it'll tell me how often i'm kind of moving around what Mm -hmm. time i'm actually going although there's times where it says i've gone to bed early and it's like no i was just sitting on the couch and not moving (laughs) i mean if you struggle with sleeping or, or struggle with snoring you try to do anything to get it stopped Last couple of years have not been great for airlines. They offered big buyout packages to a number of pilots, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, laid off a bunch of people. Well, now as people are traveling again, they're like, ooh, now we don't have pilots, we don't have baggage handlers. And a lot of people complaining that because of those shortages, bags have been piling up, getting lost and damage. Like this one woman, uh, her name is Peyton. She says she flew Delta recently and they absolutely destroyed her suitcase. Now, on the plus side, she did file a claim with the airline, and they agreed to replace it. So, the, this is what you do. You file the claim, and then they're like, give us your, ad- your address, go pick out a suitcase, and then we'll mail it to you. So, a couple days later, she got a notification that she had some packages. Turned out, the company that Delta works with to, you know, replace people's luggage didn't just send her one replacement suitcase. They sent her Thirteen. Thirteen new Ricardo Beverly Hills suitcases, which I'm just going to go out on a limb and say I have no idea what that is, but I assume it's really nice. I don't know, but she says she lives in a small apartment, so she doesn't have space to keep 13 (laughs) suitcases. So she reached out to tell them, um, I think you made a mistake. Uh, Delta said, yeah, there was an oversight with the luggage company. And so when she contacted them... Um, they were like, okay, we'll come and collect the bags. But because you were so honest, we'll let you keep two. We'll let you keep an extra one. At first, I was just thinking, if she hadn't said anything at all, everyone on her Christmas list was going to get a brand new suitcase. You've been listening to Dave and Cheryl's favorite moments of the week. 